Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Andrew and this is an AWS tutorial series on connecting to your RDS instance using phpMyAdmin. In this tutorial series, I'll go over launching an EC2 server as well as an RDS MySQL server that you can connect to. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and launch an instance. We're going to choose Ubuntu 14.04. A T2 micro is fine for this demo. Our instance details are okay. Our storage is going to be fine. We'll give this a name of phpMyAdmin. And I have a security group of all inbound and outbound traffic wide open. And I've already created an SSH key pair for myself. So let's go ahead and launch that. Great. Now the next thing we need to do is launch an RDS server. So the first thing we need to do here is go to subnet groups. We're going to create a new subnet group. We'll call this phpMyAdmin. We're going to select our VPC and we'll add all of our subnets. And click create. Now we can create an instance. So we'll jump to instances, launch a DB instance, and we'll choose MySQL. Since this is just a demo, we don't need to launch it in multi-AZ. A T1 micro is fine. Multi-AZ is going to be no. And our identifier will just be phpMyAdmin across the board here. We're going to choose our VPC. We're going to make it publicly accessible to no. And we'll choose the same wide open inbound outbound all traffic security group. Our database name will be AWS Tutorial Series. And we're not going to have any backups since this is just a demo. And we can go ahead and launch. Great, so our EC2 server is online and so is our RDS server. So we can go ahead and get started. So now let's log into our EC2 server. And I already have these commands laid out for you in my GitHub, which I'll link below. And all I'm gonna do is copy and paste them in. So after I've updated my server, I'm gonna install all the components needed for phpMyAdmin. So phpMyAdmin needs MySQL uh, on the EC2 server, so we're going to go ahead and set up a password for the root user, and we'll give it phpMyAdmin. And we'll just give it phpMyAdmin again. We're going to select Apache 2 for phpMyAdmin, and we're going to go ahead and say yes at the configuration. And we're going to give a password to the database of phpMyAdmin and phpMyAdmin again. And confirmation. And now phpMyAdmin should be all set up and installed on the server. And all we need to do is we need to enable uh, mcrypt for php5. And now we need to edit our default configuration file for Apache. And we just need to include the phpMyAdmin configuration file in there. So we'll go ahead and add that to the top. And we can go ahead and restart Apache. And what I'll do for you is I'll bring up that server's IP address with slash phpMyAdmin. And we can see that it's going to be running. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go to the IP address, do phpMyAdmin. Great, and we can see phpMyAdmin is up, and we can go ahead and log in. Great, so it's all up and running on our local host. So now we need to add an additional server that we can use to connect to. So we're going to jump back to our server, and we need to edit the config.inc dot php file for phpMyAdmin. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the block of code that you're going to need to, in order to connect to your RDS instance. So we scroll down just above the authentication type. We're going to go ahead and paste that in there. And now we need to provide the credentials for our RDS instance. So we're going to add the RDS instance host here. So if we jump back over to our RDS, we open it up and we can get our endpoint. We'll go ahead and copy and paste that in. And now we need to edit the user and the password that we set earlier when we booted the box. So this is the username and password for the RDS MySQL instance. And I made sure I named it with a capital M and A so you know it was different than the EC2 uh, MySQL localhost. And so now if we go ahead and refresh our PHPMyAdmin, 
we can go ahead and drop down the servers and we can see that we now have our RDS instance. So to show you that it's working, I'm going to go ahead and go to databases and we're going to go ahead and create a new database. And we could see that the AWS tutorial series database was there. And there we go, we have our testing new DB. So that concludes our tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.